rates of reaction. The rate of reaction is defined as a change in concentration per unit time. There are five factors that affect the rate of reaction. You need to know all five and how they affect the rate of reaction. The smaller the particle size, the faster the rate of reaction. This is because smaller particles have a larger surface area. This is why reactions occur much faster for powders compared to chips. Dust explosions can be caused by the particle size being very fine. When dust accumulates in an enclosed space in warm conditions, this can cause an explosion. Unfortunately, these explosions do happen in sheds containing hay and straw, especially in countries with very warm and dry summers. The more particles you have, the more likely it will react quickly. The steeper the slope for more concentrated solutions. Ionic compound reactions do not involve bond breaking, just bond forming, whereas covalent compound reactions involve both bond breaking and bond forming. Therefore, ionic substances react faster compared to covalent substances. An increase in temperature can cause the rate of reaction to increase. Heat energy causes particles to move faster and therefore contain more energy. This means colliding particles are more likely to collide effectively. I will explain this term later in the chapter. Catalysts speed up the rate of reaction by lowering the activation energy. You need to know the definition of a catalyst word perfect and that they can slow or speed up a rate of reaction. I will be discussing the types of catalysis in a moment and the term phase will be used. A phase is a specific state of matter that implies a boundary. It does not necessarily have to be between two different states of matter. For instance, oil and water are both liquids, however they do not mix. There is a clear boundary between them Therefore, there are two phases. But suppose you add potassium iodide to some water. The potassium iodide dissolves in the water, and now you only have one phase. There are three catalysis types. However, it is only homogeneous and heterogeneous catalysis that are usually asked in exams. Homogeneous is a catalyst in which both reactants and the catalyst are in the same phase, i.e. there is no boundary between the reactant and the catalyst. Homogeneous states that the catalysts and the reactants are in the same phase. For example, the iodine snake involves potassium iodide dissolved in water, i.e. they are in the same phase. Heterogeneous catalysis is where the reactants and the catalyst are in different phases, i.e. there is a boundary between the reactants and the catalyst. There is an experiment involving the oxidation of methanol by platinum wire. You need to know the two products and two observations from this. Finally, the last type of catalysis, autocatalysis. This is where the products produced in the reaction also act as the catalyst for the reaction. The reaction starts slow but picks up in speed as more and more of the product is produced. There are two catalytic mechanisms that you need to know. The intermediate formation theory, as the title suggests, involves an intermediate before the final product is formed.
Teacher demonstration experiment. Oxidation of potassium sodium tartrate with hydrogen peroxide using cobalt salt as a catalyst. An experiment which provides visual evidence for the intermediate formation theory of catalysis is the oxidation of a compound called potassium sodium tartrate using hydrogen peroxide. This reaction is catalyzed by the presence of CO2 plus ions which have a pink color. We will use cobalt 2 nitrate as the source of CO2 plus ions, but any other salt of cobalt, for example cobalt chloride, works also. About 10 grams of potassium sodium tartrate is dissolved in about 100 centimeters cubed of hot water at a temperature of about 70 degrees Celsius. Zero point six grams of crystals of pink cobalt two nitrate, the catalyst, are added to the beaker, which is placed on a tripod standing in a dish. Note that the solution is pink at the start of the experiment. We now add twenty five centimeters cubed of a hundred volume hydrogen peroxide. Note that after adding some 100 volume hydrogen peroxide, fizzing is observed. Note that the solution changes to a green colour. The colour change from pink to green indicates the formation of a new substance. That is, the green colour is the colour of the new substance which we will call the intermediate. The fizzing of the solution while it is green suggests that the intermediate is reacting. The fizzing is caused by carbon dioxide being given off. After a short while, note that the fizzing stops and the green colour changes back to a pink colour again. The change of the green colour of the new substance back to its original pink colour suggests that the new substance is an intermediate. The fact that the pink colour is restored at the end suggests that the CO2 plus ions have not been used up but are reformed at the end of the reaction. We conclude that this experiment provides visual evidence for the intermediate formation theory. This concludes the experiment. Not the easiest of experiments to follow, it is worth watching again. This slide is a summary of the reaction. Surface adsorption theory is important due to most heterogeneous catalysis using this, and this is how catalytic converters work. There will be more on this later. This is a three step process. This is just an example. You should be able to apply this to other chemicals. Step 1 Adsorption. The methanol is absorbed onto the platinum catalyst. Temporary weak bonds form between the metal and the methanol. Step 2 Reaction on the surface and a product is formed. Step 3. Desorption. The methanol leaves the catalyst surface and once gone, more reactants can come and be adsorbed onto the surface and the cycle can repeat. Catalytic converters. Cars unfortunately produce many dangerous substances to us and the environment. It is catalytic converters that have to convert these dangerous substances to something less harmful. The converters are made out of platinum, palladium or rhodium.
you do need to have a good idea of this table. Catalytic poisons are substances that make the catalyst inactive. Lead and sulfur are common catalytic poisons. Catalytic poisons are a problem and they relate back to the surface adsorption theory. During the adsorption stage, temporary weak bonds are formed between the reactant and the catalyst. However, for catalytic poisons, they form permanent bonds onto the surface of the catalyst. This means the reactants can't get access to the surface of the converter anymore. All reactions require a collision between reactants to form the product or products. However, if that collision does not have enough energy, then the product will not form. Heat causes kinetic energy to increase, therefore making an effective collision more likely. Likewise, concentration increases the number of particles, making a collision therefore more likely to occur. Effective collisions are defined as ones that result in the formation of products. Activation energy is the minimum energy required to form a product and it can vary depending on the nature of the reactants. Catalysts speed up chemical reactions by lowering this activation energy. A reaction profile diagram is a graph that shows change in energy of a chemical reaction with time as the reaction progresses. Some vocabulary that will be required for the next slide. These reaction profile diagrams show the difference between endothermic and exothermic. You do need to know how to draw one of these graphs and pay particular attention to the axis titles. 